27 Weirdest Modes of Transportation Head anywhere in the world and you're bound to find a mode of transportation that is slightly different to what you're used to. Whether you're in South Africa hitching a ride on a rickshaw along Durban's beachfront or grabbing a lift on a Remork Moto in Cambodia, you have to get used to what the locals use because you can't always call an Uber. Don your beer goggles and protect those baby blues as we're about to take a ride on a pedal pub in downtown Minneapolis. Strap in, order your pint, and enjoy a bit of sightseeing as you pedal along with other passengers. This bizarre contraption can also be ridden in Amsterdam, London, and San Francisco. Your carriage awaits. Funicular, a crazy sounding word to match an equally crazy way to travel. Funiculars are inclined railways where a tram moves up and down a hill with the help of a cable. This one takes it one step further and is underground. Istanbul's tunnel has been operating since 1874, and is the second oldest subway in the world, second to London's underground, and still operates effectively today. From A to B Dubbed the undisputed king of the road, the Filipinos have the Americans to thank for their bizarre road beasts, which have become a super tourist attraction. When the Americans pulled their troops away from the Philippines in September of 1945, they left behind their army jeeps. The locals took these ugly vehicles and added shade roofs, splashes of color, and used them to their full advantage. Riding a jeepney is a must-do when you're in the area. Helmets, not essential. I don't know about you, but I would feel a lot safer if I had a protective helmet to wear when taking a ride on these crazy contraptions that have been around since 1850. Monte Toboggan rides involve zero snow, loads of speed, and bucket loads of bravery. They were originally created to quickly get those living in Monte down to Funchal, and now it's a highlight for thousands of tourists every year. These wicker sledges run on wooden runners and are pushed strategically by men wearing white cotton clothes and a customary straw hat. Now we hear you asking, how on earth do they break? They use the rubber soles of their boots as brakes. The journey to the bottom takes 10 minutes and they reach speeds of 48 kilometers an hour. These are probably some of the fittest men you will ever encounter. Go off the rails. Despite the fact that the Maglev train in Shanghai reaches speeds of 267 miles an hour, your face will not be pulled back like a dog sticking its head out the window. It'll stay intact. There are no wheels on this train, but using electromagnets, this train levitates just above the tracks. There are three of these systems in the world, in Japan, China, and South Korea. Buy a one-way ticket. Take a ride with the locals when you head to Cambodia and climb aboard a bamboo train. They're known as nori by the locals, and it's more of a bamboo platform as opposed to a real train. An electric generator engine makes the contraption move, and you're perched just inches above the tracks, surging forward at 40 kilometers an hour. The tracks are not maintained, so who knows what you'll encounter on your journey, but that's what makes it all the more exciting. Keeping you in suspense. Forget Six Flags, just grab a ride on the Wuppertal Suspension Railway in Germany. It's an electric elevated railway with cars that are hooked to the railway from the top. Admittedly, it looks pretty scary, which may be one of the reasons it hasn't caught on in other cities around the world. Pedal Power This is the Cyclo, and you'll have to travel to Vietnam to test it out for yourself. It's a type of tricycle taxi where you hop on in the front and take a tour of places like the old quarter of Hanoi. Often these cyclos are faster than cars, so locals like to use them too to get to their destination a little quicker. Call me crazy. Initially, you might have those thoughts when you see this bizarre creation by Michael Killian. Killian loved the feeling of balancing on his snowboard, plus he loved creating things. So with that in mind, he ended up with the sideways bike. He's been working on this for a number of years and has finally got something that he's completely happy with. He was spotted zipping around the Eiffel Tower on his sideway bike. He claims the ride gives you more stability than a regular bike, but we've yet to see it take off. Don't be chicken. It's not scary to ride on the chicken bus. Panama, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua are also home to this colorful mode of transportation. You may recognize the shape, right? They're recycled yellow school buses, and they are also used to transport chickens and other feathered friends to and from the marketplace. You'd be amazed at how many people can be crammed in at once, so if you're claustrophobic, it's best to find another way to travel. It's a mouthful. The Central Mid-Levels Escalator and Walkway System – told you it was a mouthful – is located in Hong Kong. This is officially the world's longest outdoor covered escalator system and it covers 2,600 feet in distance and rises 443 feet from top to bottom. Sure, it helps with transportation, but it's become such a tourist hub that there are shops and restaurants lining the elevator. Sink or swim. You'd better hope sinking isn't in the cards because these rivers are also home to hippos and crocodiles. This is a mokoro, and to ride in one, you'll need to head to Botswana. They are dug out tree trunks and are moved along with a pole digging into the riverbed. This is the main way that people can get around the wetlands of the Okavango Delta. 
note, add to your to-do list. If you're lucky enough to be heading to Thailand, make sure you take a ride on a long-tail boat. They're a much-loved icon of Thailand, and this was the way people got around when there were just canals. If you can, grab a ride in one soon, as they're becoming obsolete. Logging in natural forests is banned in Thailand, and it's far too costly for locals to import the wood needed to make these beautiful boats. Sweet set of wheels. This is a velomobile, which is a fancy word for bicycle car. There are various types of velomobiles, some offering better protection from the elements, others with an aerodynamic advantage, and so forth. They also come in a two-wheel format, but they're usually used for racing. The three-wheeled version offers better stability, but then they are slower than the two-wheeled version. Often, these contraptions are home-built, as there are not too many people manufacturing them from chickens to camels. Let's head to Cuba and check out the scenery on board a camel bus. Camelo for camel, because the trailer has two humps like a camel. These semi-trucks used to be seen around the world, but have been out of action for decades and are now only spotted in Cuba. That too won't be for long as they are slowly being replaced by modern Chinese buses. Mistaken identity. Uh, I'm really not quite sure what it is. It's called an aqua skipper. You're supposed to power it and keep it afloat by bouncing up and down on it, but it really doesn't look easy, and I don't even know if it looks like fun. Get a little culture. These traditional reed vessels originated in Peru and are known as Totora boats. Originally a traditional form of water transport in the area, today the locals in need of water transport need to compete with the burgeoning tourism sector. Why the dragon shape? To ward off evil spirits. I'll go with that when on a small reed boat on a large lake. Hop in the back. In Laos, one of the primary forms of passenger transport is a songtao, meaning two rows. A bit of a misnomer though, as it's quite normal to see the front of one of these small pickup trucks pointing skywards, as passengers are crammed in the middle and stand on a platform protruding from the rear. The only safety feature is the driver's best efforts not to crash an overloaded little truck. Exciting stuff. Trucking at another level. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's the shockwave jet truck. Sounds dramatic because, well, it kind of is. It can reach about 200 miles per hour in a few seconds. A top tip if you're a trucker and you want one, don't use it for towing, given where the jet engines are located. Good for showing off to waitresses at a truck stop, though. Like water off a duck's back. Spelled D-U-K-W, but pronounced duck, this is an amphibious truck that was used quite often between 1939 and 1945. If you head to London, you can take a duck tour, which will take you across the River Thames. If there's no quacking way you can get to London, you can board one of these crazy vessels in Boston, Miami, and San Diego. Let's head to the Rockies and grab a ride in a Terra bus. These heavy-duty vehicles are only produced by one company in the entire world, and that is foremost in Calgary. This beast ferries passengers across the Columbia Icefield through Jasper National Park and into the Canadian Rockies. They weigh 33 tons, carry 50 people, and boast some of the biggest tires you'll ever see going solo. Balance is key if you're having to go on the solo wheel that travels up to 10 miles an hour and can carry the weight of a 220 pound person. If you consider skipping it because your balance sucks, don't stress. It's a gyro stabilized electric unicycle, which translates to the chances of you falling are rather slim. However, chances of you being able to afford one are even slimmer as they cost about $1,500. Get out of my dreams and into my car. Doubt you're going to impress a girl in an auto. However, if you are flying her to India and then taking her in an auto, then maybe. These little three-wheeled vehicles are perfect for three people and they're perfect for squeezing through the chaotic traffic that is the norm in India. They come in super bright colors so you can't miss them. Just be sure to buckle up as the little three-wheeler is open on all sides. Rev your engines. These little dome-shaped cars look like they've been swiped from a ride at Disney World and transported to Havana in Cuba. They're called Coco Taxis, and they're made from fiberglass, and don't be fooled by their friendly looks, these things can whiz by pretty quick. So hold on tight. I love to ride my bicycle. This is the Yike Bike, and at a cost of roughly $3,000, you'll be saying yikes for all the wrong reasons. It's the modern take on the penny farthing, and it folds away into a much smaller bike. The bonus is that it's electric, but we think we'd probably just stick to pedaling. Hit me with your best shot. The shot over jet is something you need to try at least once in your lifetime. You have to travel to Shot River Canyons in New Zealand to experience this insane watercraft that can travel inches above the water and has the ability to do 360 degree spins inches away from canyon walls. It's a rush and not for the faint of heart or stomach. Before we gear into number one, what's the weirdest mode of transportation you've ever ridden? Let us know down below. One, the guppy. Can it even compare to this weird-looking aircraft aptly named the Guppy? 
The guppy doesn't really do it justice, as this craft is used to transport immensely large parts across the globe and was even used to transport parts of the Apollo rocket. It's actually still used by NASA today.